Hello Internet, I'm Daniel and hello from Kyoto in Japan. Now the sun has just come out so that's fantastic. I hope you are doing really fantastic. I am. Okay, that was cheesy. But anyhow, hello from Kyoto in Japan. And probably you're thinking, well, what are you doing in Japan, sunshine? Well, what am I doing here? Is really crazy story. I'm going to uh, participate in the so-called STS Forum 2018, and that's the Science and Technology in Society Forum, which has been held in Japan in Kyoto. Really cool. So probably you're thinking the same thing as I. How did you end up going there? Now, it's quite a simple story actually. A couple of months ago, I received a phone call from the Austrian uh, Federal Ministry for Digital and Economic Affairs, and they said, look. We'd like to nominate you uh, to apply for this whole thing. And I was like, okay, cool, how does that work? So I had a quite a long application process, um, and the final word was, uh, was, was taken in Japan if I could participate or not. Obviously, it worked out, I'm here, this is really cool, and I'm super excited to just see kind of what the day is going to bring. So, let's do this. I'm kind of making a bit of an idiot of myself, filming myself in public, getting all these smart people stare at me and go like, who's that guy? Who let him in? So, let's do this before I get tossed out. So I've managed to get my name badge, which is always a good sign. As dumb as it sounds, that's always the part where I kind of get nervous and, and, and think like, I hope it all went re well with the registration. Imagine you would travel to Kyoto and just to find out that somehow the signing up process didn't work. Obviously it always does, and you get confirmation, but I always kind of get tingly. So, got my badge, ended up where I need to end up and uh, really looking forward to what the day is going to bring. So, yeah, let's do this. So 140 people from 42 different countries, none of them older than 40, have just been talking to seven different Nobel laureates. I was privileged to be one of these 140. And yeah, it's just one of these things you can't make up, right? It's just, yeah, wild. And um, really interesting day, really exciting, um, covering different topics and so on. Um, well, society's in a very, very exciting place right now. Um, Let's see what the future brings. And that was the topic today, um, because they were kind of saying like, okay, all of these 140 people have been selected because the committee assumes that these people will be so-called future leaders within the next five to 10 years. Well, it's probably hard to judge, but that's exciting. And it's obviously very privileged to be part of this. Um, but let's see, and we were kind of trying to tackle some of the topics that could be of excitement and an interest to mankind sooner or later. Um, yeah, exciting days. I think I'm going to have to reflect on this a little bit and uh, get back to you at a later point. And look at this location, by the way. Nice, huh? So I'm heading back to the underground to go back to my hotel in Kyoto, and uh, yeah, that's the uh, conference building behind me right now. It's just beautiful place Kyoto it's nice and warm and I can hear the crickets and ah this whole architecture is really cool as well and I've had kind of like a couple of moments to reflect on some of the things I've heard and uh, one of the Nobel laureates Professor Lee had said two things that kind of stuck to me number one is on, on, on teaching teaching anything and anyone he said a good teacher is not someone who gives the students a lot of homework to do and kind of practice mechanically that they become the best at mastering something specific but rather that he sends them home with a specific problem something they can think about and that's something I, I, I kind of miss so often nowadays is seeing so many people that kind of try and master a certain craft or whatever it is but don't understand that it's about reflecting on issues and thinking about issues and coming to a solution for something um, yeah, it's just too, too rarely done. Very exciting approach. Another thing he said, what I also really liked about him himself, reflecting on, it, on his route, is he said, I wanted to be my own master. And that's something I found very... Yes, yeah, something I can, I can relate to very strongly. It's a... Uh, don't swim with the others, by, by the way. Very fitting. There's a stream right now in this uh, beautiful country. Don't swim with the others, but 
be your own master, master, have your own faith in your hands, but also understand that you're responsible for everything you achieve in life, for all the good things and all the bad things, be your master. And if you're your master, you're the one who can also bring upon change, but that change doesn't happen if you don't work for it. Quite a nice thought. Now, just reflecting on this whole be your master sentence, um, what I also like about it is it's about taking responsibility, something as an entrepreneur I really like a lot, but it also just means not just taking responsibilities for your victories and all the good things, but also for everything bad that happens, and even if you might not be directly responsible for it, because whatever, hey, it's, it's your faith. You have to tackle and you have to uh, uh, grip with both hands. So, um, I like that. Good sentence. I'm still walking around, around to the underground and still thinking about that sentence, be your own master, and, and also what it has to do with being a leader, and so I'm starting wobbling around a bit. And I think as a good leader, um, you also have to understand that being your own master means kind of living up to the responsibilities you're given in life, and I think um, Wanting to change things mean, means you also take up responsibility for them, something and for other people and for your actions. Now that's probably not the easiest thing, but a good thing. So it's day two of the STS Forum and uh, yeah, quite an interesting start with Prime Minister Abe holding a speech um, and several others. Quite fascinating. Um, yeah, let's see what the day is going to bring. So, and I've also taken the uh, opportunity to take a quick break to kind of take in what I've heard the last day, day and a half. And um, first of all, I mean, I'm just going to turn around. What a location uh, uh, to hold this. And also for me, what a location to kind of just step outside of this conference and uh, reflect a little bit. And that's exactly what I like to do now. What I found quite striking was yesterday I had the opportunity of uh, uh, talking with two Nobel Prize winners and uh, first of all that's really a spectacular opportunity and you don't meet these people so often as my third Nobel Prize winners I've, uh, I've been able to talk with and I, I kind of wanted to challenge them a little bit because for me like one of them had, had a Nobel Prize in chemistry and the other I believe in physics, but could be wrong. Um, but the point being is I didn't want to discuss about their specific subjects and I couldn't. But what I found rather interesting, I think there's so much shift in society happening and also so much shift in our mindsets. And I think as much as we kind of are here to discuss the future of technology and uh, science and God knows what, I find especially in science whenever I have the opportunity to jump back in universities, it seems to me science are very much focused on how should I say, um, on the positive sides, and you publish your positive results. But with it, hardly anyone ever, if at all, publishes negative results. And this is something I find quite peculiar. Now, I was told, yes, 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 people do publish their negative results if they are not repeatable, whatever that means. But think of all the brain power and that energy and that time that is lost, just quite simply because science has for some reason not published negative results. So that means every time people, that's the way it sounds to me, have to start again at the drawing board and start making the same mistakes as everyone else. Imagine how fast we could move on in, 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 in science and, and probably even in mankind um, if we were to publish this and would have some sort of a uh, uh, data we could rely on and then move forward. It's a real shame. Um, and I think it's, for me, one of the pressing issues one should really look at are not so much the little nitty-gritty de details. Um, but let's see, I'm curious to discuss this with more people. Let's see. And here's one more thought. Um, might actually make myself unpopular with this, but then again, why wouldn't I? It's my vlog, so I can say whatever I like. Um, I think uh, science is science and, and is not doing a good job of promoting and marketing itself. And what do I mean with that? Um, I mean, it seems to me it's still a very elitist thing. Um, 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 scientists talking with scientists about science. Yeah, that sounds a bit stupid. But with that, I mean is, I think it would require a lot more trying to fascinate the young kids um, 
maybe also from the not so well off background, how fascinating science in all these different areas can be, how important it would be to create tangible role models. Um, because I, I absolutely am convinced we would get more kids and more diverse people um, into science, which would probably have a very different approach to the whole thing, if we could fascinate them a lot earlier for these incredible broad fields. Um, I'm very much convinced um, if we were to do that, we would within 10, 20 years have a huge shift in who does what uh, and, and, and how to create um, even more. Um, it's a shame. Oh, and while I'm at it, now is another thing. Um, I think it's such a shame um, that science also seems to be trying to make things sound as complicated as possible. Very rarely do I meet people who are highly educated, highly intelligent, highly able people who are at the same time incredible communicators and to manage to take very complex topics and make them sound simple. Now, one of my favorite quotes is by Yeats and he said, think like a wise man, but communicate in the language of the people. And I love that sentence. And for me, I would just so love that science as such, maybe even at a place like here, would kind of take a step back and say, okay, we're kind of always amongst each other, which is good kind of comparing data, but what can we do to fascinate a broader audience for this incredible field we're all in? Um, I see this as a huge challenge, um, as something which will still require a lot, of, a lot of steps, and I don't even know of the scientific community would actually just look down upon this and frown. But again, if you can talk about it, you can start fascinating people from very different walks of life to also pay into this because at the end of the day, science is one thing, but it's the trick is how to get it back into society and how to society actually, how should I say, have something of it. Interesting day. I'm curious to see what else we'll be talking about and uh, really looking forward to, to discussing my viewpoints. Let's see if I can find more I can talk with about this. So day two has just come to a conclusion and uh, right now is one of these moments you just cannot possibly make up in life and it's just so wild and spectacular. So I was, I engaged in, in a workshop on how to build entrepreneurial ecosystems and uh, those of you that know me know yep, that's a topic which is quite close and dear to my heart and so I don't know whether it was like a hundred people or whatever and we were divided into six different groups was having chairs. Uh, 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 responsible our groups and debated on what it takes and what it doesn't take and um, yeah at the end of the day I had a lot of discussions there and got to present the ideas of my group and um, here comes a fun fact in the audience were two Nobel laureates so to speak in front of these people and all the other incredible people within this this, this, this area was spectacular and I spoke about how an entrepreneurial ecosystem has to be built by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs, something which is very close to Austrian startups. How you need to have a fire starter, the first person who starts it off, and he or she builds a campfire, something others can gather around. And you need to have an, an, an outside system which keeps that fire burning, which is like politics, policy makers. You need universities that bring in even more wood, which is like talent, that keep the fire burning. And at some point in time, the fire might be so big that others pick up the flame and start different fires. That's how you build an ecosystem, an entrepreneurial ecosystem. What I found very interesting was one thought that someone brought up and said, by the way, it's not about countries, it's not about nationalities, but it's about cities. Um, that especially in Europe, but all over the world, the ecosystems are more down to the cities. And it's true, we don't go to Germany to build a startup, we go to Berlin. We don't go to America, but we go to San Francisco, the Bay Area. We don't go to Israel, but to Tel Aviv. And the point being is that's a huge challenge, that's a huge opportunity for startups and at the other side cities to sit together and understand what are we good at and what can we build upon and how can we position ourselves. Long story short, really interesting. I'm still tingling in excitement because it was so cool and I um, yeah, can't wait to do more. So uh, that was amazing. So I just got so carried away out of excitement that I didn't even notice I was running out of battery and the battery just died off. And I was just going to say, Whatever you do, always grab opportunity by whatever you can grab and go for it. Give it 100% because I think the worst thing is in hindsight looking back and thinking ah, I should have and I could have and I would have. Go for it. I think it's better to make a fool of yourself than to do absolutely nothing. And um, yeah, exciting. <laughs>